It's very hobbit wood, this. I bet it's spooky at night. Yeah, it's a very it's a nice little quiet wood, though. I've not... I don't walk here that often, so I don't know if there's bluebells or garlic or anything here. I've got to I've put my hat and scarf back on because um, we'll be... Going into an exposed area in a minute, and uh, I've already felt like a breeze. The weather can change so rapidly here, and uh, there's no problem if you've got a car. Like when I had my Alberta, and I'd have my car with my van with my dry clothes, dry shoes, and socks. And she'd be there waiting and hot drink and food. I mean, I've got food with me, but for me, I have to rely on a bus service, which can be, most of the time it is reliable, but there are occasions when a bus is missed out. Now you imagine you're getting wet, you're getting cold, your feet are damp and it's dark waiting at a cheddar bus stop or some of the other stops further out in the sticks which I've actually sometimes had to wait an hour for N almost giving up hope the bus would ever come I've had those experiences I tend not to go for the remote bus stops in the winter because it is a bit spooky tell the truth but uh, never mind it's that or we don't come out Is that why we don't come out? Big jumble of natural rock there. Still climbing. I've had a nice bar of chocolate now. It's, it was, well, it's probably going on for one o'clock now. So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. The most it'll take when I get over the other side it's two hours <sighs> two hours because I'm not rushing it's not a march I'm observing watching, listening <sighs> and I can hear the wind above <sighs> this is the first time the wind has got me when I was on the other side of the gorge it was calm total calm but there is a northeast wind. So I will be going into that for a good part of the second half of the walk. Of course, when I came the other way, it was mainly downhill. I forgot I'd have to go uphill. Captured for posterity. Posterity. Now on BBC or Channel 4 or somewhere, they're showing celebrity type people out walking with all the BBC can offer to make their walk perfect. I've heard they don't do it all. They get lifts. They got all the equipment. They seem to know where they're going very well. And it is good though, I do like to see it because you can see the countryside where they are. But be a hell of a lot of editing, I suppose. And I think, well, they could get all mine on YouTube for free. But obviously, mine are jumpy, shaky, and most of the time not edited. And you can hear me puffing and panting. You get weird colours because the camera's done well. When it was brand new, it was absolutely perfect. Perfect pixels. Perfect magnification. It's got to last me for now. I've got another camera in my bag. Another Sony, a smaller one. It's got issues, but it does still work for um, video and zoom. But it won't work 
photo and zoom. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work, photo and zoom. It starts going white. Oh. Oh, my God. Seems to be going on forever, this walk. Oh, the rock stones are still there, I see. I just zoom in. Where are they? There they are. Stack stones. I watched this program about David Bowie's wife, a man. Showed around, she showed us around the house that they had built in a, near a forest of mountains. And she has started stacking stones in her wonderful ground. She's got big gardens. No, I mean, they were loaded, are loaded. And they can look beautiful and serene, I think, when you've got everybody. But I don't regret her, resent her at all. No, I'm just saying how it's nice that she's sharing some of her stuff with us. Things we've not seen or known. And she was grieving. She's been grieving for coming up six years this January the 10th. And she's only just started to go back to the house and stay there. She said she found it too sad and she used to cry all the time when she was there. Because that's probably where Bowie spent a lot of his time when he was very, very ill. But knowing him, he'd want to be amongst the New Yorkers, I think, as well. He had a lot to do. He really did. You just imagine if David Bowie hadn't died yet, what he would have produced now. <sighs> Goodness, he was so creative. Such a clever man. And he drew on the talents of others. Some people say he did a lot of pinching and copying and whatever. But the thing is, he, he didn't do it like that. He drew on their talents to create really good stuff with really good people. Yeah, I'm a Bowie fan. You might have guessed. Bowie, and why am I such a fan like him and John Lennon and Bob Dylan? But especially Bowie. It's because they were my, my contemporaries, if you like, of my generation. They shared similar things, grew up when I did. I know Bob Dylan's older, so is Bowie and John Lennon. I know they're older, but not that much older. And we shared a lot. And they were ordinary people. Come from ordinary families that worked hard and were clever. You know, and it gave everyone hope. Look at the Beatles. They just, okay, they had, they were bright. They weren't living in slums. Bowie never lived in a slum. He wasn't from the, the East End as such. He had a lot of roots in Yorkshire. But he himself, he went to an ordinary school. He went through a lot of things that we had to do. When the Queen was about, and still is. There's so much sharing going on. Anyway, that's a little reflection for today, folks. Just leaving Blackdown Wood. The where the quarry is. I'm now in Sheepfield. I came through here the other week and the, all the cows had come through here and they were all down the bottom there. There are still cows out, I can see in the distance. That is a bit worrying, seeing as my cows might be out where I've got to go. But I will, no, oh, I will not know that. There's no way you can see from here whether my cows will be out. When I say my cows, I'm talking about the ones that I can't walk through. They've got a bull, they're a big herd. They're a frisky herd. I wonder if the llamas are out today, because I normally quarter them. 
No sign of cow pack now. There was lots of it. Yeah, you can tell when it's pitted like that, when it's pitted and spread out, that means there's a, a good week or so ago. Once it starts doing all that. So it's beautiful Somerset countryside. Beautiful walls. Oh, I just love this place. I love this walk, you know. Sometimes I just take my when I'm lying in bed or sitting in the chair, I can just take myself here because why I like this particular walk. And there's the Mendip Hills over there. Area of outstanding beauty. There's the aerials. I do all this. Up through there you've got Velvet Bottom. Why I like this particular walk at this time of year, it is so peaceful. The whole of this area is peaceful, actually. But I can't do this in the summer. There's very few. I mean, it was only three weeks ago. They took those cows out the day in the morning. I came in the afternoon, early afternoon. They took the cow. The cows had just been taken out. Only just. Same over that side. That big herd that roam about over there. Oh, I can see my llamas. I can see them, but they're way off. They're way off. I might call to them, they might hear me. Oh, what a lovely scene that is. Right, folks. Beautiful Somerset. Beautiful scene. I just love this place, the peace. Hardly anyone comes here. It's not actually a proper route. But I'm not doing any harm, and I really love it here. I'm going to take a picture of that tree. Moving out.